In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Facebook ads to generate tons of Facebook page likes and followers. It's not easy to do than most people think. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money and can be done really fast. You can generate thousands, tens of thousands of Facebook page likes and followers in weeks, maybe even days when you know how. You just gotta follow the steps that I'm about to show you. So I'm here on my own Facebook page, just to show you what I'm talking about. I've currently got 154,000 Facebook page likes, 157,000 followers. And I'm gonna go through the exact process of creating a, a Facebook ad campaign in order to generate followers, how easy it is, the settings you want to use, and all that sort of stuff, so you can implement it right away. I'm also gonna talk at the end about what you can do with those followers, because there's more to it than you probably think. There's more advantages, and they're slightly different to what most people expect when it comes to building followers on Facebook. So make sure you stick around for that. But before we get into running this Facebook ad campaign to generate the page followers, what you need to do is set up your page and, and just take a little bit of care of housekeeping and make sure your page is something that people are gonna actually want to follow when they go ahead and check it out. So just a few quick things that you need to do. Firstly, make sure you've got a cover photo in there, right? Um, these things aren't difficult to create. You could do it yourself. You could hire someone on Fiverr, for example. It's gonna be very inexpensive just to get a nice cover photo. Here, it, this page is all about me as opposed to as opposed to my company. And different people may want to make that decision depending on where you, how you've built your brand and how you want to position it and all that sort of stuff. But it's just a very simple, obviously, image of me, my name, little bit of info, and that's it. You could use an image here potentially from your portfolio. If you're a portfolio-based company and you produce you know, product services that, that have something really visual to use, or you could get something similar to this, create it where it's just uh, about the brand that you're looking to present. Really straightforward, right? Um, make sure you've got some stuff on your page as well. Doesn't You don't have to have tons, you don't have to have hundreds of posts, but you know, six to a dozen posts, if it's a brand new page, is a good idea. That could be content that you created, if you created any content, like I've got a lot of um, in here. It could be links to other articles in your space, you know, other things other people have done, it could just be curated content. You just want to make it so that this looks active. If people come to your page, this is what they're gonna see. They're gonna go look at your posts, they can see, aha, okay, um, there's stuff going on here. There's like positivity and stuff going on here. This is a real person or a real company. They're, they're active, they're engaged. You wanna tick those boxes. And then of course, enter in some of your basic um, information about the page, you know, contact information linked to your website, what kind of page is it, maybe a little intro, a little bio about you or, or about the company, depending on which option you're going for. So just make sure you get those simple things taken care of. And now we can jump into Ads Manager and go ahead and create this Facebook ad campaign. So here I'm in an example Facebook ad account. I'm gonna use this to walk you through the campaign setup. Before I do, I just wanna quickly mention that the reason why we're running a Facebook ad campaign as opposed to using organic methods to grow a Facebook page is because organic methods to grow a Facebook page are very ineffective. If you're trying to spam Facebook groups or any sort of other sort of cold outreach, spammy type techniques, the sort of things people do, even just regularly posting to your page, hoping that people see it, hoping that you're gonna get followers that way, none of those things are gonna work. The spammy type end of stuff, like spamming groups, for example, that just leads to your account getting banned, your page getting restricted, and if you're just posting, trying to get followers organically, you could do that for the rest of your life and you're not gonna get as many followers as you could get with a day of advertising. It's just not the way Facebook works as a platform. It's not like Instagram where there's still um, some organic traction there. It's just, it's a pay to play system. Um, and that's just what it is. Doesn't mean they're not worth getting. I'll explain more why as we go through this, but that's just something I needed to explain upfront. So in order to create a page likes campaign or a page followers campaign, they're basically the same thing. The system has changed slightly. So if you knew how to do this, you know, a couple of years ago, well, Facebook have gone ahead and changed the setup, which they do from time to time and, it, and it's not surprising. So you wanna come into ads manager and then you wanna go ahead and click on this green plus create button. And then if you've got the new Odax um, campaign menu, you want to go ahead and select engagement. And um, even if you've got the old campaign objective menu, you also want to select engagement, but the next step changes slightly. So we're gonna go ahead and select engagement and click continue. And that's all we need to do at the campaign level if we're using the new ODAX campaign objective menu. I wanna quickly show you what this looks like in the old campaign objective menu. So I've just gone into another one of our ad accounts that doesn't have the new ODAX campaign objective menu. Why Meta does roll out some things to some people, not to others, I don't know, but, uh, but there we go. So it, with this campaign objective menu, if you click on the plus create button, and you still want to go ahead and select engagement like I talked about with the other option. But once you've selected engagement, you then get these options down here below. And what you want to go ahead and select is page likes 
then click continue. And then from there, you can sort of join up with what I'm about to show you on the other ad account, right? Um, you just have to take that extra step. It's slightly different with the new campaign objective menu. You just wanted to make sure in case you've got this old setup. Okay, so here we are back in the original uh, ad account with the new ODAX campaign objective menu where we just selected engagement and came straight through to here. There's nothing else we need to do at the campaign level, unless of course you're involved in a special ad category. We've got videos on that. So if you are, make sure you check that out. But we want to leave buy type as auction, um, don't touch the campaign objective. We're not going to do any A-B tests and you don't need to turn on advantage campaign budget, what used to be called campaign budget optimization. Same thing, just a different name. And because we're only going to be having the one ad set, so no need to, to worry about that. It's going to work exactly the same. Now, if we do jump over to our ad set, the first thing we need to do, if you've got the new ODAX campaign objective menu, if you don't, you won't see exactly this. You'll see something similar, is we need to select the conversion location as the Facebook page. That's what effectively makes this a page like or a page follower campaign that's designed to get more followers to your page. Very, very, very important. That's where we're going to be sending people. That's where we're going to go ahead and get the action that we want to take, which in this case is follow the Facebook page. Obviously, make sure you've got the right Facebook page selected if you've got multiple um, Facebook pages associated with your account. Then we get into budget. So when it comes to page like campaigns, you don't want to overspend at all. This is not going to be something that completely changes your business overnight. It's definitely valuable, nice to have. I'll explain why later. Um, but therefore, you don't want to go mad. You want to start nice and small. Now, what small is for your business might be £25 a day. It might be $100 a day. It might be £10 a day. You know, something like that. $10 a day would be absolutely fine to start with. You could even start with a couple of dollars a day. That's also fine. I'd much rather you run a campaign on something that's very affordable for you, see how it performs. Then you can calculate, okay, I've spent, you know, $5. I've got this many likes. Um, I would quite like a target to get, you know, a few thousand likes, therefore I need to spend this much. Okay, I'll do that over the next two weeks and you can go about it that way. Once you've got the data from a few couple days of running ads at a small budget, you can then make those projections. So absolutely fine to go with something small to start with. Um, go ahead and do that. Then we scroll down to the audience section. Now, what I'm going to recommend with a page likes campaign is something that I would recommend with any other type of Facebook advertising campaign. But if we go ahead and select edit, and I'm going to get rid of the United Kingdom, which is the default. And instead, I'm going to go ahead and enter worldwide and select that as a region. This goes contrary to a lot of marketing advice where you think well, you want to be specific and target the people that are really good prospects for you. And that's all true. But when it comes to page followers, at least initially, we want to just get some. We want to get some because it gives your page credibility. Um, it establishes some authority in your space. When people come and check you out, they will feel like you know what you're talking about. Um, and that's what we're initially trying to do. The very first stage of generating Facebook page followers is getting some. We can then get more specific. So let's say, for example, you were like, I just want a minimum of 2,000 Facebook page followers so the page doesn't look embarrassing. And when I run my other ad campaigns to try and sell my products, sell my services, I've got some credibility there. And it absolutely does do that, by the way. If you run a conversions campaign trying to sell your product, people come to your page and they see it's got, you know, 23 followers. <laughs> It's like, oh, I'm not going to order from this company. They don't look legitimate. So this, th there's a lot of value in getting some page likes initially, some page followers initially, um, by targeting worldwide. Now, the reason why we just want to get a couple thousand really quickly, easily, inexpensively, and we're targeting worldwide is because it's a much, much cheaper to do so than probably targeting the country that you're, the specific country that you're watching this from. Um, markets like... Western Europe, the US, Canada, Australia are much, much more expensive than targeting worldwide. From worldwide, you're going to pick up uh, markets in Asian countries and African countries where the population doesn't have as much disposable income and therefore they're less desirable to advertisers. Advertisers are willing to pay less to reach them. And because Facebook operates on an auction, a competition system, if advertisers aren't willing to invest as much to reach those people, they are cheaper to reach. So even if you're a local business, I don't see any problem with generating a couple thousand worldwide. And then you can come in and be a lot more specific. So let's say we've got a couple thousand, that's just what we wanted. And then we wanted to build a Facebook page following that's more representative of our target market. You can go ahead and take that out. In a business like mine, a Facebook ads agency, we could go ahead and add in, you know, the United Kingdom and the United States. And we'd go ahead and add in things like Australia and Canada and our, our main, our main markets, you know, and you can go and be more specific after that. But to get started with, if I delete those out, I would strongly recommend 
you go ahead and do worldwide. And the difference, by the way, in terms of cost per follower from going with worldwide versus say, versus say just the US is massive. Worldwide, you might be looking at a couple of cents per new follower. In the US, you might be looking at 40 or 50 cents per follower. It really can be that significant. Once we scroll down, I would like you to leave the rest of this really open. Even adding in, say, detailed targeting options that make it more specific to your industry are likely to increase cost. And the beginning of this is establishing credibility and just getting some followers showing that your page has some legitimacy. So you don't want to add in any demographic interest behavior targeting option that's related to your industry. If you've got some interests that you're just that are really broad, that you really want to add in. It's like, I, I need these people to be somewhat related to what I advertise, which is fine. Then you can go ahead, like in our example, for example, we could go ahead and add in something like digital marketing. You know, there's how many people are interested in that? 150 to 175 million. Okay, that's massive. That would be fine. Social media marketing. But what I really don't want you to do is add in some of the smaller, more specific targeting options. Definitely not. Big broad ones are fine, but it's also fine, and this is often how I would get started, to just go with open broad targeting. Once that campaign's been run, been live, even a few minutes, Facebook's gonna work out, oh, okay, this is a page all about digital marketing, we'll put this in front of people that are interested in digital marketing. They will work that out for you with something like a page follower campaign where you get so many conversions really quickly. The advice is completely different for other types of campaigns. I wanna make that really clear as I go through this, because um, I don't want you to implement these settings in other types of campaigns, I've got lots of other videos that show you how to set those up properly and differently from this. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and um, and leave that nice and broad, not mess with age, not mess with gender, not mess with languages for the most part. Sometimes you might want to, you know, we only want Spanish speakers for example. <laughs> Fine, you can go ahead and add that in, but most of, most of the time it's not necessary. Okay, when it comes to placements, it's absolutely fine to go with Advantage Plus placements, what used to be called automatic placements. And the reason why is because Facebook's only going to put um, this type of campaign where the conversion location is your Facebook page on certain placements. If I go ahead and click manual placements, for example, you can see that ads are only going to be run on Facebook, not on Instagram message or audience network, which makes sense because you don't want to be taking someone from Instagram over to Facebook. People aren't going to like that. They're going to drop off. So it's just within Facebook and even within the Facebook platforms, it's only um, certain locations within Facebook. You can see not all the options, you know, it's not on Facebook stories, for example, and other, other various things you can go through. So absolutely fine to go with Advantage Plus placements because you're limited to a few anyway. Optimization for ad delivery is page likes. Obviously, that's absolutely what we want. That's what we're looking to do. I would not recommend adding in a cost per result goal, and that's all you need to do at the ad set level. Very, very straightforward for a Facebook page follower campaign. Now, let's go ahead and jump over to the ad level. Okay, so when it comes to running a Facebook page follower campaign, um, the ad format is a little bit different than usual. You can see that things like your headline is fixed and we'll go through that. You could obviously see the preview on the right hand side to see what it's going to look like. So the first thing is you wanna go ahead and add in your primary text. Now your primary text wants to give people the reason for following your Facebook page. Why should they follow your Facebook page? What are they going to get out of it? What content do you put on there? What's, what's the incentive here? What's the benefit of them taking that action? So if someone's gonna follow my page, for example, that's all about digital marketing, Facebook advertising in particular, I could use something like learn how to generate low cost leads and sales with Facebook. Okay, something really simple like that. And you want it to be nice and concise and short. We're not asking people to take a big action here. We're not asking them to fill out a big survey. We're not asking them to purchase a product. We're asking them just to go, yep, click on this little thumb over here. I want to follow um, that page and potentially see the content they produce and all that sort of stuff, right? So really short, simple, to the point, learn how to generate low cost leads and sales with Facebook is great. You can add in other text options. Um, this is something that's relatively new with Facebook advertising where you can add up to five text options, it's been available on other ad platforms like Google for a while. And if you're not quite sure which one to go with, just simply go ahead and add in a text option. We've got one there and you add in another one and you can keep going up to five. That What will happen then is Facebook will just test a number of different options, see which one works best, 
and that's what we'll be run with. So uh, a good way to just uh, slightly improve your results, particularly if you're unsure, I'm just gonna go with the one um, for now. Next thing we need to do is add in an image. And I would for the most part recommend you use an image as opposed to a video or other media, because again, it's a really simple ad, really simple ask. We want people to glance at this and just very quickly take that action. We don't want them to think they need to watch a video first and you get lots of drop off. The more complex the ask, the more complex the ad is a general good rule of thumb. Here, the ask is super simple, as easy as it gets on Facebook, therefore the ad should be super, super simple as well. So in terms of adding an image, if I go ahead and click add media and add image. So for demonstration purposes, I've just gone ahead and grabbed this image, the one that was the header on my, uh, on the cover photo on my Facebook page. For a business like mine, this is the sort of thing that we're going to use, where there's not like a visual element. We want to be really simple. We know that within, you know, the potential market that Facebook could reach. They're gonna be people that are interested in Facebook advertising, digital marketing that might, might recognize me. You know this guy? Yeah, yeah, I know. Therefore, this is what we're gonna go with. Are there people that might recognize your brand or or perhaps the product? Or even, you know, if you're just getting started, you don't have that, you could use your product or a picture of your service or a portfolio or the same sort of thing that you would put as a cover photo on, you know, on your Facebook page. And of course, if you don't have any of that stuff and you just want to advertise, a stock image that's related to what it is that you offer. Again, all that's fine. Don't overthink this, don't overcomplicate it. Just use something that represents your page or your business or your product and something that's relevant, that is congruent with learn how to generate low cost leads and sales with Facebook for me. Well, of course this image is, but that might be something different for you depending on what your business is. Just go ahead and use that. Obviously when it comes to this image, I would get my graphic designer to re-edit it to you know, make sure the crop works and things like that, but that would be fairly straightforward and easy to do. Hopefully that's clear. As I said, don't overthink it, simple and just representative of your business, your industry, works great. Tracking, don't need to worry about that, don't need to worry about pics or anything like that. We're just keeping people on Facebook here, so that doesn't matter. Very, very simple ad, as you can see. Now, of course, once you've got it all up and running and once Facebook has gone ahead and approved it, if we jump back to the campaign level, you'll start to see results coming in and this results will show you how much you're paying in terms of cost per um, Facebook page like cost per page, Facebook page follower. You can then start to make a decision like I talked about before. Start with a small budget and go, okay, targeting worldwide, we're generating new followers for three cents each. I'd like a thousand, therefore we're gonna have to spend this much. Uh, or I'd like 5,000 or I'd like 800 or whatever target you have. Um, I'd like to spend this much, we'll get there. Then we might run a, a page-like campaign that's on a, keep it with a nice small budget, but, but is more representative of our target audience, like it's just in the US or just in the UK or something like that. That's also absolutely fine. Or you could just decide to turn it off, move on to other Facebook advertising campaigns, and then, um, you know, use that as the credibility indicator that it is to help improve the rest of your Facebook marketing efforts. So I want to quickly talk about the value of these Facebook page followers that I've just shown you how to go about and get very easily, quickly and inexpensively. It's not for organic reach. The same way in that you can't um, use organic methods to get followers in the first place, you can't really post to your Facebook page much and get much in the way of organic reach to those people that follow your page. Let me give you an example. So if I just scroll down to one of these posts and we click on see insights and ads, you'll see that of my 150 odd thousand uh, people that follow my page, we've got post reach of 2,400. So a really quite small um, fraction is actually what's coming, it, it, it's what's seeing that post organically. And I haven't put any money behind this, I haven't you know, boosted this to my Facebook followers, people do that sort of stuff, but I haven't done any of that in this scenario. This is just pure organic. So there's a little bit in there, but it's not much. That's not really where the value is. The value in Facebook page followers and having this sort of number is that I've already said about the credibility that it gives you. If you're running any other sort of advertising campaign on Facebook, trying to generate leads and sales and whatever it is you're looking to achieve, it's all going to be easier if you look like you have a larger presence on the platform. It gives you credibility. I know you now know that these Facebook page followers don't do much in terms of organic following, but the people you're advertising to, there's a good chance they don't know that. And this also translates to larger business opportunities. So there's loads of media publications, YouTube channels, podcasts, all sorts, that will take a look at things like your Facebook following and use that as a deciding factor of whether or not to invite you on their podcast. Will you be on my podcast tomorrow? Because they only want to invite people on that have larger followings because that helps grow their podcast. They're hoping some of your audience will come over when you promote it to them. So doing this sort of thing can help you get, can help open a lot of doors in terms of 
promoting yourself, promoting your company, promoting your brand, because again, you look more established, more credible, more like someone that people want to do business with. Then the other thing you can do with these Facebook page followers, and I think this is the most valuable part of a follower, this is the best reason to continue running Facebook page follower campaigns and try and build these followers up and up, is because you can then invite the people that follow your Facebook page to join your Facebook group. Because you're invited. And you're invited, and you're invited, and you, you, and you, and you, and you, and And whereas there is not really anything doing in terms of the organic side of things on Facebook pages, there certainly is on Facebook groups. And if you can build a Facebook group by first building a page, inviting the people that like your page, that follow your page to join your group, which a lot of them will, and then using that to grow a group and marketing within that group, that can be a fantastically effective business strategy. And to show you that I know what I'm talking about, here is my Facebook group. It's called the Facebook Ads Mastermind Group. It's got 168,000 members, actually larger than my page at this point. And this is a serious generator of business for us, both in core sales, um, leads for our agency and interest in our services, all sorts. We've even hired staff when we've done that loads um, from members of this group that follow my stuff, that follow my methods, and we can then hire them, take them on as account managers. This group has been a tremendously valuable asset and you can do it by, as I said, generating Facebook page followers and getting those people, uh, inviting those people to go ahead and join your group. This is actually the largest Facebook group in the world is specific to Facebook advertising, which is something that's pretty awesome. If you wanna go ahead and join, haven't already, then just check it out on Facebook. I'll include a link in the video description below. Um, but if you wanna know more about that strategy, around how you go about getting those Facebook page followers and converting them into group members, because there's more nuance to it than I've covered here, then I've got a video on that. Just go ahead and check it out here. Walks you through the details step by step, just like I've done here, but for that strategy. And if you're interested in growing a Facebook group, which is something I'd recommend, this is gonna really help you out.